custom properties make things so much easier, including theming. But when we're doing theming, a lot of the time you might end up some with something that looks like this, where you're setting up your light and dark theme. And then you also have another way of having to check for the same thing, especially if you're giving users the ability to, like if they set the theme, you're not just relying on system preferences, which you should be doing, you know, do let system preferences work, but users should also have a choice in what theme they're using. And because they have a choice, we sort of get stuck having to do it twice like this, which sucks. Well, it used to suck because my friend and friend, there is a better way of doing it now using modern CSS and which we're gonna be exploring today as part of my style query spotlight series. So to get started with this, you're gonna see how amazing this is. I'm going to actually remove all of this and remove all of this. And we're just gonna do two things. We're gonna say that by default, the color scheme will be light. And over here, we're gonna say that by default, the color scheme will be dark. And so we could also just do a light dark up here and then we don't need to include it here, but I'm just being explicit uh, between the two and the one advantage with that that we didn't see before. And actually it's sort of breaking things a little bit, but you can see with my system selector now, it's always dark because my prefers color scheme is set to dark. So it's always setting my the defaults uh, for my inputs and other things, it's going to a dark theme. The next thing I'm gonna do is add one custom property up here. So we're gonna say that I have a theme, cause it makes sense, right? Our theme, and I'm just going to put in a sun emoji. And we can do that just like this. We don't need it to be a string or anything. We can just say our theme is light or sunny or whatever you want. And then over here, and I'm going to do a moon to look for when we have a dark theme. And that's gonna be basically what's controlling everything we have here. And now down here, we can actually do something very, very similar, but I'm not gonna do it quite yet. What I'm gonna do is, uh, let's actually, I'm gonna copy this <laughs> just so I don't have to retype them after and paste them in. And I'm going to comment these out. And just really fast, if you haven't seen this, I'm just getting the value of sunny and the value of my moon here. That's just coming from here. You can see I have these options set up for my system, my light and my dark theme. That's why I've set them up this way. Uh, so here where I have, this is my light theme right now. And what we're going to do is I'm going to include this in my body selector. So we're going to say body, all these are going to get set. And you can see actually now this is the only way they're getting set. So no matter what we're doing, we're, we're stuck in our light theme, which we don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and we do an at container. And in here, we're going to do a style. As I said, this is part of our style query spotlight. We're exploring the amazing things that style queries enable. And we're gonna remove all of this from here and we're gonna put that in here. And the only thing we need to look for is if our theme is set to dark. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste that here. So if we have a theme of dark without the semicolon, uh, there we go. You can see the dark theme has come back. And so if I'm on my system, my, oh no, it's broken again. This is normal, don't worry. <laughs> um, but we're now, the system setting is working because my prefers color scheme is dark. So we're getting our dark theme kicking in right here. Now I remember I said, I'm commenting this out. And the reason I commented this out, and I just realized it's, I have SCSS enabled for some reason on this because I have the, the single line, um, this should be, you know, the, the classic CSS comments here, but it doesn't matter too much. <laughs> just if you're wondering why I have single line comments. Uh, I have SAS enabled. I'm not using it in any way for this demo. Uh, but what we want to do now is actually get these to also work. Let's turn this one off and put this. And then I'm going to do the same thing here where we're going to come in and do this. And now I'm going to take this, copy that for my dark. And so a little bit of duplication coming in here. Uh, and put this right here. And because this is all on the root, in a way, maybe I, I might not even need all of this. I think I do though. Because uh, if I did this correctly, this means that by default, this is what's going to kick in. But as soon as we come up here where I have my color picker, if I choose light, it should then I have a root that has this value. It's going to switch the theme over and switch the color scheme over, which means my scroll bar and other default things I don't have any CSS for are also going to switch. And then it's going to jump from the old one of this over to what we had or to, to those styles there. So let's see if this works. Or if I go light, we get a light theme. And you can see the scroll bar has switched over to the light theme. My select has because of the color scheme and everything else is switching over because we're going between the two themes. And so we have a light and a dark and I can just go back to my system styles as well. And just like that, 
like a little bit of magic, it works. <laughs> it's just, it's so nice being able to do it. Uh, we do have a little bit of duplication, but we don't have the amount of duplication that we had before. And the really annoying thing with the old version of it is if ever you wanted to change something, you had to change your value in two different places. Whereas now my entire color scheme is all controlled here instead of having a light full color scheme once and then the light full color scheme a second time, we have it all in one place. And while this works really well for site level theming like we're doing right now, if you're doing it at the component level, it also works really, really well. There's some really good stuff you can do with that. And in the next video as part of this style query spotlight series, I'm going to be looking at web components specifically because it actually handles or solves one of my biggest complaints with web components and make something really simple with them that could be kind of annoying to do previously. So if you don't wanna miss out on that video and you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please do consider subscribing so you don't miss out on it. And if you missed part one of this series where I go over the absolute basics of style queries, that video is right here for your viewing pleasure. And if you're watching this in the future and the next video is out, it will also be on screen right now. And with that, I would like to thank my enabler of awesome, Andrew, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome. Awesome.